Code monkey get up get coffee Code monkey go to job Code monkey have boring meeting With boring manager Rob Rob say code monkey very diligent But his output stink His code not functional or elegant What do code monkey think? Code monkey think Maybe manager wanna write login page himself Code monkey not say it out loud Code monkey not crazy Just proud Code monkey like Fritos Code monkey like Tab and Mountain Dew Code monkey very simple man Big warm fuzzy secret heart Code monkey like you Code monkey like you What's new, Dino Dudes? It's me, the Meteor Raptor, and welcome to another episode of the Meteor Raptor Reviews. Today, Dino Dudes, let's talk about something controversial. Let's talk about something that'll surely make me a lot of fans. Captain Marvel. The 2019 newest D- newest- sorry, not DC. Sorry, that's how much of a comic nerd I am. I still refer to Shazam as Captain Marvel sometimes. The newest Marvel movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and arguably the most controversial due to both the fact that it's a female lead, the admittedly kind of stupid comments Brie Larson has made, and the whole argument of SJW versus non-SJW. And you know what? I'm not talking about any of that. I could not care less. It's a female-led superhero movie. Wonder Woman did it. Kick-ass head hit girl who is pretty much the main character. Female superheroes in films are nothing new, and they've been done well, and they're gonna keep being done well. Black Widow, Gamora, Nova to an extent, uh, Scarlet Witch, Storm, Mystique. This is nothing new, especially in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Why is everyone acting like it is? Is it because she happens to be the main character in the movie? Big deal! I'm sorry, this is just my opinion here. If one of your big selling points in your movie is that, oh look, it's a female lead, then you're doing something wrong because you're focusing more on a political aspect instead of making an entertaining movie. And that's kind of what this movie sure feels like. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of things in this movie that are great. The costuming, the special, not the special effects, but the costuming, the makeup, most of the action, it's all great. But as for the story, well, the story isn't a bad idea. We follow Captain Marvel, or Mar as she's known, or was it, no, it's Vel, or whatever they called her, I forget. Yeah, Vel, that was it. And apparently, she has no memories. Okay, that's kind of strange, but cool. In fact, the whole setup up until she gets to Earth is a really interesting idea, because it is just Captain Marvel and the Nova Corps going off and fighting the Skrull and trying to protect the innocent. That's kind of what I expected a Captain Marvel movie to be. So eventually, of course, we have to end up on Earth, and there's this whole mystery of, wait, have I been here before? And she starts to follow around these clues leading to her discovering more about her actual past, her real name, the people she used to know, and even how she got her powers. So, what goes wrong? Well, this movie's pacing is very, very, very bad. The movie's just about two hours. This should not have been more than an hour and a half at most. This really feels like it could have been dumped onto the Disney Plus streaming service and it would have been fine there. It just feels like it just wants to do this random thing and be done with it. And it feels like it's trying to tell seven different stories but gives no time to really flesh out any of them, so therefore we have no real reason to remember any of them. In fact, that's kind of my main complaint with all the characters. I remember Captain Marvel, Nick Fury, and the brief cameo from Agent Coulson, and that Australian-sounding, uh, Skrull dude. I don't even remember his name when I saw this movie three days ago. Now, yes, maybe it is a movie I have to watch once or twice to really get a feel for it. But you know what? This is a review that comes right after the movie. And... Look, I'm no stranger to liking movies that people don't. I'm no stranger to liking a movie that might be kinda bad. I mean, my entire channel is pretty much based on me talking about bad shark movies. I'm kind of known for loving the unlovable. But Captain Marvel... 
is the kind of film that I hate the most. Because I don't hate it, I feel sorry for it. To me, the worst kind of movie is the movie with the wasted potential. The potential that could have been the best movie possible. And yet, either they played it too safe, or they didn't even bother trying to play it at all, and they gave us what we got. That, to me, is what Captain Marvel feels like. Now, keep in mind, I hate the Captain Marvel comics. At least the stuff that's been going on for the past few years when they essentially made her look like a butch lesbian, which I got no issue with. Don't get me wrong here. You want to make a character in a new way? Go ahead. You want to make a character gay? Sure, whatever. You know, I'm not going to question it. But they made her an abusive, alcoholic, Nazi-sympathizing, Holocaust-mocking, cripple abuser who is unlikable, refuses to take responsibility for any of her actions, and the fact that that character then leads into this movie, it was kind of an upward battle no matter what to get me to sympathize with her. Now, to the movie's credit, none of that is present. I like this Captain Marvel a lot. Uh, she's got kind of a almost childlike innocence, but also a maturity to her that works. She isn't this whole, oh, I need to be told what to do and to go from here to here, that kind of character like we've seen in the past. She very much is a, okay, I'm gonna take the initiative and get this done. I don't know what's going on, but we need to figure this out. I like her because she doesn't just sit around and wait for, she's not a reactionary hero. She's like, you know what? My goal right now is to go out and to figure this out. We need to help these people. And speaking of helping people, I'm gonna go like this when the spoiler is over, because I kinda gotta go on a rant here. And this is a pretty big one, so please, if you haven't seen the movie, hit the mute button. This kinda spoils the whole movie. Okay, let's go. So, the Skrull are the villains in this movie. In fact, doing that probably gave away what the spoiler is, but it turns out, no, the Skrull actually aren't the bad guys. In fact, they're just refugees looking for a new place to live. Okay. What about Secret Invasion? What about all the stories where the Skrulls have come in, tried to commit genocide, turned the heroes against each other because they can't trust one another? What about the times when they've tortured, maimed, killed, blown up entire cities, killed thousands of innocent people, taken over entire planets? But no, they're totally fine. It's the Nova Corps who are the bad guys. Sure. Sure. Look, I get it. If only a few of them happened to be... Like, maybe if this movie was more careful with how it worded that and went, Okay, this group that we're, that we're being targeted, they're not bad guys unlike the rest of them, and the whole movie was building up to sh for Captain Marvel to realize, Okay, maybe they're not all bad. That would have been pretty interesting. Would have been a good emotional conflict and would have led to a unique character arc that we kind of haven't seen before in a Marvel movie. I'd be totally down with that. I mean, Killmonger tried to show us that sometimes the heroes are wrong, but this time it went back to the very much black and white, good versus evil sort of dilemma. That kind of made the movie kind of dull. On top of that, this is kind of a spoiler, but this kind of needs to be discussed. So if you really are uncomfortable, just hit mute again and I'll do this again. Captain Marvel is very much a Mary Sue in this movie, and I hate using that term. Now keep in mind, People got really upset over Rey suddenly being able to use the Force and fight with a lightsaber in The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens. Yeah, Captain Marvel in this movie literally keeps having powers for whatever they need her to do and has zero weaknesses. At no point do they ever say, this could kill you, this is your main weakness, this is your kryptonite, or these are your powers, this is how it works. They just kind of go, you have powers, whatever we need to give you, we'll give you because the plot says so, and shut up. And yes, there is this whole scene, this whole idea of, oh, well, her powers are being contained because she's not strong enough to overcome that. And through the power of friendship and, I guess, feminism, I don't really know, and it was kind of a dumb scene. I'm not trying to offend any upset people here, this is just my opinion. She overcomes it and becomes this ultimate fighting machine, and... It's just dumb. Like... Keep in mind, a friend of mine, she writes fan fiction and stuff, and I help her edit it. We had a trouble with a character we came up with who essentially was a Mary Sue, or a Gary Stew, I guess is the male version of it, because we kept giving him abilities and powers, because the story was meant to be comedic. When we took it more seriously, like this movie's trying to, we had to sit down and go, okay, what can stop him? 
what can stifle him, and what can kill him. What are his fears? What are his actual flaws? And in this movie, aside from her being kind of airheaded at times, she has no flaws. She's just this perfect character that everybody loves or kind of tolerates or hates by the end, but she's not an interesting character. The problem I've been seeing with Marvel is they're trying to go like, oh, inclusivity, and, you know, we got all sorts of people from all races and creeds and coming together to unite as one, and your superhero movies. Don't announce that. Just have it be a thing. Just, and I'm not trying to talk about the politics, just have fun with what you are. Because you know who has fun with this? Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, Nick Fury's in this movie, and I loved his character in it. Him and this, I forget his name, the Australian, uh, or whatever accent that was, the main scroll, my two favorite parts of this movie because they just kind of have fun with knowing it's a superhero movie, let's just roll with it. In fact, it's kind of fun to see a younger Nick Fury pre-Avengers and all that, and even Neo having his eye. And to this movie's credit, there are a number of scenes that are genuinely hilarious. There's a couple scenes that are really well written that kind of show some great camaraderie between Captain Marvel and Nick Fury. But they're very few and far between. On top of that, the acting is pretty decent. But Brie Larson really kind of phones it in a few times. I don't like making fun of an actor, I don't even like talking bad about actors, because, well, they're, cause she clearly did try, but... There's just a number of scenes and lines in this movie where it feels like they accidentally just got the... Well, the, the warm-up take accidentally mixed in there. And speaking of getting it mixed in there, this movie is terribly edited. Like, I've been taking editing classes, I've been editing film for a while, for years now, but they make so many amateur mistakes. For example, there are scenes when characters are talking and they go, okay, so what about this? Oh, that's good, okay, yeah, okay, cool. There's no space in between each part when they go, they were like one scene. Her hands are like chained essentially and she goes, hey, any of you guys want to get me out of these? And instead of pausing for a few seconds, cutting their reaction and then her going, okay, I guess not, it goes, Hey, any of you guys want to get me out of these? Oh, I guess not. Like, there's no pause, which that also kind of kills the joke. I don't know what happened with the editing, but it's literally the most noticeably bad editing I have seen in a movie in a long time, including Bohemian Rhapsody. Sure, Bohemian Rhapsody had that one scene, but this movie has, like, at least 20 minutes worth of footage that is just terribly edited and doesn't really help this movie. What also doesn't help this movie is the fact that the CG is noticeably bad, like Black Panther bad in a sense. Don't get me wrong, the makeup, the combat, and most of the CG looks really good. I love the design, I love the costume work, I love a lot of what this movie does. But there are many noticeable scenes and the CG is just like... Is that for real? Like, is that what they're trying to pass off in this? Especially coming after the heels of Endgame, which had such good CG. I don't know what the issue was here. The music, really, it was not that memorable. Like, even Captain Marvel's theme, I don't remember it. And there were a few songs used in it, which, again, I don't remember any of them. Because, well, the soundtrack was certainly no awesome mix. Camera work, as I discussed, it's kind of shakily shot in a few scenes. And a couple of the positioning of, like, camera angles and stuff were very questionable added to the editing, it certainly kind of looks amateurish almost. On top of that, something I forgot to mention is there's multiple scenes when characters have this high-tech alien technology and they immediately go, doo -doo -doo. okay, that's how we use it. There's no scene when she explains to them, okay, this is how you do it, or oh, this is how it works. Just cool. It just works that way. So can I recommend Captain Marvel? Yes and no. First of all, this is kind of a spoiler, but you don't need to mute it for this. There is nothing leading into Endgame. I was very disappointed by that. If you're a die-hard Marvel fan, then you're probably going to see it, and you will probably get some enjoyment out of it. People often cite The Incredible Hulk, or Captain America the First Avenger, or Iron Man 2 as the worst movie in the MCU. Honestly, I would have to argue that in terms of quality, rewatchability, and just entertainment value, Captain Marvel might be the worst. Look, I'm not trying to set people off here. I did enjoy the movie just fine. 
I'm not giving it Dino Raptor Spit or just like one Raptor Claw. I'm giving it two Raptor Claws out of four. It just feels lacking. It lacks the spirit of fun enjoyment that all the other Marvel movies seem to give us. You could sit here and argue it's because of the politics, or because it was poorly written, and it's kind of a mix of everything coming into one amalgamation of... Cool. I left going, okay, that was good. You know, like the space chases and the action scenes when they're fighting in outer space certainly is entertaining, and it's, it's kind of new compared to other Marvel movies, but it's certainly not, oh wow, this is going to change the game, and... Yeah, honestly, between this and Aquaman, I would happily rewatch Aquaman a hundred times. Don't get me wrong, I will probably get this on Blu-ray, and I will rewatch this once or twice, but it doesn't make me kind of run out of the theater going, Everybody, go watch this! It's so good! Or make me go back to where I've been hanging out and going, Guys, go watch Captain Marvel. It's a great movie. Honestly, right now, it feels like DC has kind of got the leg up on entertaining fun with both this and from what I've been hearing about Shazam. But I still have to see Shazam, so we'll find out when that comes out. Anyhow, Dino Dudes, please understand this is just my opinion. I am not siding with anybody here who says, oh, it was ruined by, like, SJW as a liberals. I'm not siding with them. I'm not siding with anyone. I just thought the film was okay. Honestly, the best part of it was the Stan Lee cameo and the thing they did at the beginning. That actually made me tear up a little bit. Anyhow, until next time, this has been the Meteor Raptor saying keep cool, and I will see all you dino dudes around. Later. Also, the cat was amazing.